Hey drummers, it's Rob Litton here from drumsaword.com. I thought it's been a while since I gave you guys a free lesson from my YouTube, Facebook and Twitter followers. So today I want to I wanna correct that by giving you a full song lesson for free. It's a great beginner song for drummers. The song is Uptown Funk by Mark Ronson featuring Bruno Mars. And the drummer, believe it or not, is actually Bruno Mars, or according to Wikipedia it is. And along with the free video lesson you're about to watch, you can also download the free PDF drum chart, all four pages of it. You'll find a link beneath this video, and I highly recommend that you have this printed out in front of you as I go through the lesson. It's certainly going to help you to visualise the parts as I demonstrate them for you. And there's over 200 uh, full song lessons, just like this lesson you're about to watch on my website now, drumsaword.com. So if you want to consider signing up to gain access to over 200 famous songs just like this, then please check out my website, drumsaword.com, for further details. Let's go on with the lesson. The tempo is 115 BPM, so not too fast. Um, and we've got um, some pretty simple stuff going on for us drummers, but there are a few little surprise sections, especially some of the drum fills, that might um, be a little bit tricky for the beginner. So I'm going to show you some alternative ways to play them, some simpler ways, but we'll get onto that. In fact, here's the first example of that, in fact. So the first bar. I've written the drums enter about 16 seconds into the song, so they don't come in straight away. We've got some hand claps. Dum 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 And those hand claps are on beats two and four. Um, but you know, you don't put that on the kit. The drums come in with this one drum fill, starting on beat four, and we've got one and two and three and four E. One and two and three and four E. It's a flam on the snare drum. If you're not sure what a flam is, both hands coming down very, very close to each other, but one hand coming down for, um, first, and the second hand coming down second, but slightly louder. That's a left-handed flam. That's a right-handed flam. If you want to Google how to play flams, there's plenty of videos online, but it's a really cool rudiment. If you can't play flams yet, then you could just play it as a single stroke. And after that flam, we come in with a bass drum on the E of beat four. 4E and up. So beat 4 is filled up with 4 16th notes. 1E and a, 2E and a, 3E and a, 4E and a. And we're playing the 4 and the E, the first two notes of beat 4. 4E and a, 4E and a. If, again, if you can't play flams, you could play 4E and a. And if that's still too difficult for you, then you can just play two notes on the snare drum. 1, 2, 3, 4 e. 1, 2. We're into our first drum beat. 1, 2, 3. But what he plays on the recording is one, two, three, da -dum. So we're playing one, two, three, da da, and it's up to you whether you play that as or or. It's up to you, but on the recording, four E. So, like I said, then we're into our first drum beat, and this drum beat is kind of a disco sort of feel to it because of the bass drum 
playing constantly on all four beats of the bar, beats one, two, three, and four, which fall down with the snare drums on beats two and four, exactly in time. So the hi-hat is just playing simple eighth notes, and the bass drum is just gonna pump on all four beats. One, and two, and three, and four. This is drum beat 101.B. You know, this, 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 this is right at the beginning of your drumming um, lessons. You should be able to play this drum beat at some point when you first start. And not feel uncomfortable having the bass drum and snare drums come down together at the same time. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. That's the tempo of the song, isn't it? So with the intro, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that crash symbol on beat one of the first bar of the drum beat. If you find that bass drum coming down on beats two and four too difficult for you at the same time as a snare drum, because they're not lining up properly, then first of all, work on it. You really want to learn that drum beat. But if you want, you could also separate the bass drum and snare drum and just play one, two, three, just so you can get through the song to start off with. That'll work just as well. It won't have the same feel. It's not as, it's not as groovy as pumping the bass drum all the way through, um, but that's the way around it if, if you really have to. Then every two bars of this drum beat, Bruno opens the hi-hat at the ends of the second bar on the and of beat four. So you can see that third bar, because that bar's actually got, that line's actually got five bars on it. The drum fill at the beginning doesn't count. It's then two bars of drum beat. So the first two bars of drum beat are bars two and three, confusingly. And the open hi-hat at the end of bar three, you can see the little O symbol, that means an open hi-hat. It then closes on beat one of the next bar where the two bar pattern then repeats. So at the end of bar three, one, two, three, four, and one. Four, uh, four and one. It comes down with the bass drum, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. And that two bar drum beat then gets repeated, so that open hi-hat occurs at the end of every two bars. So bars four and five, one, two, three, four, one, two, and then again at the end, and one, two, three, four, one, two, again. And one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one. So that two bars just get looped. And one, simple as that. So that goes on to our third line, because you can see that two bar drum beat just gets repeated. The third line is actually eight bars long, so that two bar pattern gets played four more times. And then we go into build up one, I've called it. So at the end of the last line of verse one, we've got the open hi-hat, one, two, three, four, and one. It then closes with the bass drum on beat one and the hi-hat being played with the right hand. One, this is build up one now. And at that point, the bass drum just gets played on its own for the rest of that bar. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and then bar three, one, two, three, and then bar four. One, two, three, four. And then, hence why I call it the build-up, we've then got this pattern which gets played between, I think, the floor tom and snare drum. The bass drums continue to pump on quarter notes only, so this takes a little bit of coordination. You're playing eighth notes between the hands, one and two and three, and your bass drum still maintain the quarter notes, one and two and three. So, without the build-up in volume, we've just got this for three bars. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and you can tell I'm actually build up in volume anyway. One and two and three and so you want to be able to feel comfortable starting this sort of tempo and this sort of volume. One and two and three and four. Bar two, bar three, and then bar four, one. So where we're gonna stop. So you can see I built it up over the three bars, and the fourth bar, we stop on beat one with the loudest note. So um, let me just put the end of that line before I show you that demonstration again. After bar four, hit the, um, all three limbs together on beat one, and then we come in with that drum fill again on the beat four. So one, two, three, four, e, one, and we're into chorus one. So it's exactly the same drum fill we had, we had at the beginning of the song, and you've got exactly the same options depending on what you feel more comfortable with. So um, going from, let's just do the build up counting out loud. One, two, three, four, bar two. Three, four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two, three, three, one, two, three, four. So we go one, two, 
three, and D, one. Into chorus one. So chorus one is the same as our verse drum beat. We've got a two bar pattern, but at the end of the first two lines, we've got a drum fill. The hi-hat opens at the end of bar two for the first line. So look out for that. We get one, two, three. By the way, two things. First of all, the end of build up one, to the, the, the um, crescendo, the, the, like sort of the hairpin getting wider, that simply means it's get louder over those three bars. And then also when we go into crash cymbals on beat one, I don't always rush back to the hi-hat for the end of beat one, even though it's written on the chart. You could actually have the crash cymbal ring out and come in on beat two. One, two, three, four. One and two and three. That's ringing out. No one's going to miss that hi-hat on the end of one. You could play one and two and it's not so fast you can't do that either. But it's not always essential. You could just let it crash the ball ring out. One, two, three, four. So just be aware of that you've got the option to come back to beat two after a crash or the end of one, depending on what you feel more comfortable with. Try both though. So that open high at the end of bar two. One, two, three, four, and one for chorus one. And the end of line one for chorus one, that drum fill. One and two and three. And up for E and up. So starting on the end of beat three, halfway between beat three and beat four, we're going to play some sixteenth notes. Right, left, right, left, right, left. And up for E and up. And notice how that bass drum is maintained on the quarter notes throughout that entire bar. So we play the bass drum with that snare drum note on beat four. And a four E and a. And a four E and a. One and two and three. And a four E and a. One and two and three. And a four E and a. One and two and three. And a four E and a. One. Again, you can leave out the bass drum on beat four if you find that too difficult, but you definitely want to practice this kind of stuff. Hopefully you're getting that bass drum sort of independent from your hands and not have to think about what the foot's doing too much. You just concentrate on what the hands are doing. So that bar looped around the tempo. One, two, three, and a forty, and a 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 one. And when we go into line two, after that first drum fill, we do get a crash cymbal on beat one of that second line. One, two, three, and a forty, and a one, two. Line two of chorus one is exactly the same as line one of chorus one. So um, we got the crash on beat one, the open hi-hat at the end of bar two, the same drum fill at the end of the line, but then when we go into the last line, notice how there's no crash cymbal on beat one of that first bar of line three of chorus one. That's important dynamic wise. You just play one, two, three, and a three, and a one. It goes straight back to the hi-hat. One, two, three, and a three, and a one, two. So then for the last line, we just got that bar being played three times, leading into the hi-hat, not a crash at the end of each drum fill. One, two, three, and a forty, and a one, two, three, and a forty, and a one, two, three, and a forty, and a... Now here we come to a section in the song which um, I had to interpret, or I had to decide how to interpret it for you guys, because this is a beginner drum lesson. And um, what I'm about to show you, how we actually play it on the recording, is, is too much for drummers to be able to play. I wouldn't expect a drummer to be able to play this. Um, this sort of technique. But for the more advanced drummers out there, then you could play it this way. I'm just going to show you a simplified version so you complete beginners or beginner drummers can actually have a go at this as well. So on the recording, and I'll do the, the simpler version in a second, but let's do the actual version I hear on the recording first. And I'm pretty sure that this drum fill in bar four was played later in the um, recording process. It was added over the top of the drum track after because there's a little flam on beat one, which I think for a drummer like Bruno Mars, who I presume is just a part-time drummer, just does, does it for fun, although I hear he's quite good. This is the kind of technique that, I've, that I still struggle with. I doubt a sort of part-time drummer would have thrown in. So the clue for me is that there's a flam on beat one of this drummer fill, which going into it from the 16th note drum pattern before, and this all makes sense to you in a moment, bear with me, um, going into the flam is quite advanced. So enough talking. We've got the last drum fill, one, two, three, and a forty, and a one. And we go into a flam there on beat one. So starting from beat four, that bar three, forty, and a one. And if we play up to speed, it takes a little bit of sticking to be able to get that. Right, left, right, left, left. And play go, right, left, left. Forty, 
and uh, yeah, so it's right, left, right, left, and then a left hand flat. That's my preferred way of playing it. You could play right, left, right, left, right, and play a right hand flam, but I have to play it as a left hand flam. 40 and a 1, 40 and a 1, and 2 and 3 and 40. So we get the bass drum in between each of those flams. 1 and 2 and 3 and, and the last one is just a surprise one, the shorter version, 40. Different feel to it, the last one. So um, again, as I hear on the recording, one, two, three, and a forty, and a one, and two, and three, and forty, up to speed, one, two, three, and a forty. So if you want to play the actual recording, that's how you play it. A little bit of tricky sticking and getting into that first flam. But if you want to play the simpler version, which I recommend for all you beginner drummers, then what you can do is just simply leave out the flam on beat one. That first flam, leave it out and just come in with a right hand at the end on beat one instead. So you play one, two, three, and a forty, and a one. Instead of playing and a forty, and a one, you can play and a forty, and a one. It's really simple. And then you've got time for the next flam on the and a two, sorry, on beat two, beat three, and beat four. So you could play one, two, three, and a forty, and a one, and two, and three, and forty. Instead of playing forty, and a one, forty, and a one. So up to speed the beginner version. One, two, three, and a forty, and a one, and two, and three, and forty. And again, you could play those just as single strokes, not as flams. One, two, three, and a forty, and a one, and two, and three, and forty. One. Doesn't matter. But try to put the flams in there. The good fun. So let's go on now to page two, um, and uh, what I'll do actually, I'm going to play this stuff up to speed for you now. Um, so you can, I'm, I won't start from the beginning of the song because there's a lot of repeating bars here. Let's start from the third line, third line down of verse one, the whole of the build up one, the whole of chorus one, and into the first line of verse two where you're going to hear a little break section which I'll explain to you how to play after this demonstration. So without my microphone on so you can hear just the drums, here's what that sounds like. So into verse two, um, on page two, and you heard me play it um, as we go out of that drum fill, one and two and three and three, one. We get a little hi-hat, I like to call a hi-hat bark. So we hit the hi-hat on beat one, it opens and it closes on the E of beat one. So it's that 16th note idea. Instead of playing 40, we're playing one E. So it's a, excuse me, it's the same speed of that, speed as those two notes, but just played on beat one with the open hi-hat, one E. Open close, open close with the bass drum on beat one. One E, two, three, four. And we come in with a flam on beat four. So from the drum fill at the end of chorus one, one and two and three and three, one, two, three, four, one. And then we're into the rest of the verse two. Again, one and two and three and three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So practice that bark technique. get comfortable playing that technique. That's really cool. If you can't play, which you should be able to eventually, you can just play one. You don't have to worry about the open hi-hat, just play one, two, three, four, and then you're back in. But make sure you can count now. One, two, three, four. Four there on snare, drum, and flam before we go into bar two of verse two where the drum beat continues. 
So we can do a lot of skipping now because it's, uh, it the song basically repeats itself. So that the whole of verse two is the same as verse one. The whole of build up two is exactly the same as build up one. The whole of chorus two is exactly the same as chorus one. It even has the same outro drum fill, the same options about how you go into that first flam on beat one. Let's instead then go on to page three where I've given a section called uh, br uh, break. I've called it break. It's not really a break, it's just a breakdown, I guess I should have said. Um, and at the end of chorus two, we've got that drum fill. One and two and three and four. Three. And we've got the same hi-hat bark at the beginning of, of the break. One. So get ready with that. One and two and three and three. One, two, three. But what's cool is Bruno then continues with just the bass drum and snare drum, no hi-hats. So after that hi-hat bark, one E, two. One E, two. One E, two, three, four. One E, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. It just continues like that. That's quite cool. So one E, two, three, four, one. Or simpler, one. Which, if you just play that, you don't have to worry about the hi hat at all. One, two, three. So you could play one and two and three and three. One, two, three. But the recording, it's one and two and three and three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Third bar's the same. Then the fourth bar, the hi hat comes back in on beat four. One, two, three, four. And one. So onto the next line where the hi hat then continues, but it starts on beat four, that last bar. Notice that open hi hat on the and of four just to throw you off. One, two, three, four, and one, two. So four and one, and we're back in on beat four there. Four and one. Next line, the hi hat just continues. It's our same verse drum beat as previous. Let's go on then. The hi hat opens every two bars as usual. Let's go straight to the third line. Notice at the end of that line, we've got the 4E drum fill. One, two, three, and 4E. One, two, three, and 4E. One. Into the fourth line where there's no crash symbol after that drum fill. Notice that. One, two, three, four E. One, two, three, four E. So that's interesting because you're not playing the bass drum on four there. One, two, three, four E. You're playing it just after on the E. So you're going from this pulse. So on its own it sounds weird, but with the rest of the... Um, just line up the hands and feet. And then on to the next line, four, but line four, um, which was skipped because it's the same stuff. And then line five, interestingly, um, we don't get the... Going into the... Black bomb, black bomb, black bomb, black bomb. That last line's quite simple. The last two bars, one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four. So it should be no problem for you getting into the flams for that one because there's no drum fill leading into it. Uh, before we go on, uh, let's now go back to page two and do a demonstration. Let's play, I'm going to play the last line of chorus two for you on page two and then the whole of that break section as well uh, on page three. So we can hear how we go from section to section there. Here's what that sounds like. So going on to chorus three at the bottom, um, and it's the same as our previous choruses. Everything's identical apart from the very last drum fill at the end of chorus three. We've got, instead of one and two and three and three, Bruno plays one and two and three and four. Oh, sorry, one and two and three and four. And I think he keeps the hi-hat open for the rest of that bar and then closes it on beat one of the outro on page four. So we've still got the same problem of getting from a 40 and a 
to there. So I'm playing right, left, right, left, both. It's the same problem as the flam we had before. So um, the advanced version, the version we hear on the recording, one, two, three, and a four, and a one, and two, and three, and three. That was a bit weak. One, two, three, and a four, and a one, and two, and three, and three. One, two, three, and a four, and a one, and two, and three, and three. And we could manage to do a little double there at the end. Left, both, left, both. That last note just naturally feels a little bit weak or sounds a bit weak because I'm not giving it the same power as a single stroke. I'm playing a double there at the end. So it's going to sound slightly different, um, which is why I think these drum fills were added after the recording process. Um, it just, for me, it's just the gut instinct I've got. So if you can't play that double at the end, for the first one, you could just play a single right hand again and then come in with the open hi hats on beats two and three. So you could play one, two, three, and a three, and a one, and two, and three, and three. Just leave out the open hi hat on beat one. That's your um, simpler version. And then we go on to page four, and probably um, the most complicated part of the song for beginners, because um, we've got um, some ghost notes going on, we've got an offbeat ride cymbal pattern going on, we've got a lot of stuff going on, uh, and if you're a complete beginner, this might completely freak you out. But I'm gonna show you some simplified versions to play this as well. But this is definitely something you wanna learn, have fun with, because it's just gonna make your drumming so much cooler, technique-wise as well. So what we got, is we're playing um, the bass drum on beats one, two, three, and four. So the pumping still bass, the bass drum still pumping. We've got the snare drums on beats two and four still. But then with the right hand, we're going to be only playing on the ands. And it's actually, I think it's played on the bell of the ride cymbal up here. I like to use the shoulder of the stick and then hit into the bell of the ride cymbal like that. You could also hit it near the bell of the ride cymbal. It doesn't have to be on the bell. I think it sounds more like the recording if you do it. It doesn't really matter though. But the thing is, with the technique, is we're playing just the ands. So the right hand is going to be playing in between the bass drums. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and... So a brand new drum beat to learn if you've never experienced this before. You're leading with your bass drum. One, two, three, four, one. And you must hear that right hand as the upbeat. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and that's the basic groove. So practice going into it with the um, uh, crash symbol on beat one, then moving to the and. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. That might feel a little bit weird for you because you're playing um, one and two and three and four and one and and one and so practice that movement one two three four one two three four i like to put, I probably prefer to do it that way just because i can um but make sure you can practice putting a crash symbol on beat one of this groove that's the hardest part for you the options on top of that are totally up to you then the drum fills at the end of each line and then the ghost notes so the ghost notes are what give you this, this drum beat, it's, it's cool feel. It's something subtle going on in the background there. If you're a complete beginner, then you might not have even recognised there's some notes going on in there, but you might have just heard, felt something. This sounds a bit empty. That's not what he's playing on the recording. He's actually playing. Compared to this, totally changes the feel and the sound of the drum beat. And that second version with the little notes there, what he's playing on the recording. Briefly, ghost notes are played very, very quietly. They're written in brackets on the chart. I just give them a little tap. So you hit snare drum on two and four, normal volume, and then all the other, all the other notes, the ghost notes, are gonna be played quietly with a little tap. And where they fall, um, the first half of the bar, let's go straight to the second bar, because this is the bar that loops. That crash and belong beat one of the first bar, um, isn't actually the repeating pattern. Bar two is the repeating pattern. We get this, one, and when you start it, it's a bit weird. One E and two. One E and two, and a three E and four, and a one E and two, and a three E and four, and a one E and two, and a three E and four, 
and a one e and two and a three e and four and a one e and two. You can hear the first half of the bar is the same as the second half of the bar. You've only got half a bar to learn, but you're starting it. You're starting that ghost note pattern halfway between one of the two notes. Um, so going back to bar one now, when we go into the crash cymbal, we don't have to worry about that ghost note on the E of one. You could put it in. But I've, I didn't hear it on the recording. He just plays one and two, and then he comes in with the ghost note pattern that gets repeated. Final thing to think is final thing to say about that ghost note pattern is that he tends to play the ers, the ghost notes on the ers of two and four, slightly louder than the ghost notes on the es of three and one. So we t it kind of gets this feel. Difficult to replicate for me. Uh, if I try and speed it up and try to get the groove going. That was kind of it. He kind of plays those um, pickup notes, the ghost notes on the earth of two and four, slightly louder than the ease of three and four. So bear that in mind if you want to, ease of three and one, sorry. If you want to, add extra dynamics in, go to the extra level to make that really groovy, then add in those extra dynamics and put that in. Um, if all of that's just too much for you, then just go back to this. Make sure you can play at least this drum beat. It shouldn't be too hard for any beginner drummer to learn eventually. Um, practice putting that crash cymbal on beat one, and then you can add the ghost notes in over, over, over time if you feel more comfortable. Let's go straight to the first end of first line where we got our first variation at the end, and it's very subtle. We get one E and two, and a three E and four. I've just noticed a little mistake there, so I'm going to correct this now live in front of your very eyes, so that when I get when you guys see this chart, you'll see the corrected version. But there's not a ghost note. I've, I haven't written a ghost note there on the uh, two, but you won't see that. Anyway, so one E and two, and a three E and four, and a one, a one. That left hand comes at, comes up, and a one. And we play a left hand open hi-hat on the earth beat four, closes a 16th note later on the beat one with a crash cymbal. One, one E and two, and a three E and four, and a one and two, and a three E and four, and a one and two, and a three E and four, and a one, a one. That might be a little bit hard for you if you're a beginner without the ghost notes. Three and four and a one. Might be a little bit easier for you. The next line, exactly the same as the line above. Um, bars three and four though, we got the one E and two and a three E and four. And that last snare drum there on the uh, four is played at a normal volume, leading into beat one. A one with an open hi-hat. So we come down from the right cymbal for this drum fill. A one, and I think Bruno just plays and two and, but it could be and two and, I can't really hear exactly. But I think it's just and two and a one and two and three and four e and a one and two and three and four e. So we go from one e and two and a three e and four and a one and two and three and four e. And you can leave that open hi hat ringing for the whole of beats one and two. Close it on beat three. Close it on beat four. It doesn't really matter. Wherever you feel comfortable closing your hi hat for, but let it ring out for a little bit. One e and two and a three. And four and a one and two and three and three. One and two and a three and four. One, two, a three and four. A one and two and three and three. One and two and a three and four. On to the next line. Uh, and then the last bar um, you've got of that third line. One e and two and a three and four. A one and two and three and a four. A one and two and three e and a four. Go from eighth notes to sixteenth notes there. Use whatever sticking you like. I've written a one and two and three and a four and a, but I 
decide to play just for the challenge, right, left, right, left. A one and two and three and a three and that's more advanced. It's also some good practice to be able to play single strokes with the bass from underneath. But if you want to play just right hand for all those notes, that's fine. A one and two and three and a three. On to the last line. And the last drum for bars three and four, we've still got the, la the, the louder snare drum note leading into it. A one E and a. Now this is, um, to read is a bit of a nightmare for you beginners. So I recommend you learn the, the rhythm. And do your best to replicate that with your hands. You're playing a one E and a two E and a three E and four. A one E and a two E and a three E and four. A one E and a two E and a three E and four. Don't worry too much about where the 16th notes are falling. The more intermediate advanced drummer could read it. One E and a two is missed, then the E and the uh of two are played with the left hand, keeping the left hand upbeat on the 16th notes. And then we go into beat three. A three E, left, right, left, four. So a one E and a two E and a three E and four. Floor tom and bass jump together on four. That could be all three limbs as well. I can't really quite hear the snare drum on beat four though, so I think it's just perhaps just two drums together. A big E, four, two toms. It could just be the one floor, floor tom and bass drum though. It doesn't really matter, just give it some power at the end, that last note. So the last two bars, one E and two, and a big E and four. So one E and a two, E and big E. <laughs> Sorry, one E and two, and a big E and four. So one E and a two, E and a big E and four. Again, one E and two and three and four. A one E and two and three and four. So just memorize the pattern. Da 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 da. Boom. So those drum fills um, at the end of each of the lines there for the outro are pretty tricky. You got you got four in a row. So if you're a beginner drummer, feel free to use your own drum fills. Work on keeping this groove going and not being thrown off by the drum fills. Make sure you can get back to the groove at the end of each line, back into that ghost note pattern if that's what you're practicing. The drum beat is more important than the drum fills in this um, situation. So feel free to make up whatever drum fill you like, if it's easier for you or if it's putting you off playing that groove properly. Of course, you can practice it all and have a go at trying to play it all as written, brilliant. But if you're really struggling, Work on the drum beat more than the drum fills. That's more important to maintain and keep going all the way to the end of the song. And I think you can just sort of memorize that, that drum fill at the end. Da 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 Boom. And you're out. So before we finish, let's go back to page three. And let me um, play from the, uh, the last line of chorus three. So we can go into that drum fill and then all the way into the outro to the end of the song for page four. So we can hear how we go from section to section all the way to the end of the song. And there you go. So I hope you had fun with that. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to email me, robertdrumsaword.com. Don't forget to download the free PDF drum chart that comes with this lesson. Come on over to Facebook and Twitter to say hi if you like. I, I, I do competitions on their giveaways and, and things like that. So um, if you're interested in joining in, get some freebies, then come on over to Facebook especially. Um, and uh, that's also where I like to hear song suggestions if you've got any for me. Uh, and then also, if you are um, interested in this lesson, if you found this lesson useful for you, then you might want to consider signing up to become a member at drumstheword.com. And what that is at the moment, for a $97 year, $97 for a year subscription, you get instant online, online access to almost 250 full song lessons where I teach you famous songs from start to finish, just like this song. You get the full video, the full drum chart for all those songs, Plus, as a thank you for signing up, I give you hundreds of freebies, including three large ebooks containing hundreds more famous drum beats, fills, and solos from some, from some great songs. And then over the year of your subscription, you also go, gain instant access to all the lessons that I upload for my members on the day I upload them 
online access. So you've got all the new stuff to look forward to over, your, over the year of your subscription as well. But if you've got any questions, email me, robertdrumsaword.com. I'll be very happy to help you out, whether it's to do with my lessons or to do with the subscriptions. Um, and until next time, have fun, happy drumming to you, and toodle pip. <laughs>